I remember clearly one day I was on my way to work and it was pouring with rain. Outside Debenhams and Harrow, I sat on the middle of the floor and I rang my doctors, I need help. I was breaking because I need someone needs to help me because mm-hmm. I don't want to be here no more. You know, winging it is always known for talking about the things that are the most difficult to talk about and sometimes most difficult to hear, but we don't shy away from it. So I am joined today by my most special guest representing many hundreds of thousands of women who are out here in this world surviving because what she's gone through is sheer survival. So Maxine, Hi. welcome to Winging Thank It. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank I'm you. Coming. You know, we're talking today about something that resonates with women, not just in the UK, around the world. Yeah. Every country, every woman that has the desire, willingness, wantingness to conceive a child, yeah. carry a child full term and birth their child, um, we realise it's not so easy. So tell me about your journey to motherhood. Okay. When I was um, 14, 15, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome. At right. that age, I had no idea what that is, right. or what that was. My periods just stopped. At 15? At 15. I started periods when I was nine. Wow. So I was an early developer. Okay. So I was in primary school. Right. Okay. I got teased about it, you know, with the... Malarkey, because um, you're going to school with going pads. to school with pads. I can't, can't go swimming. Year, I don't even know what year that is, <laughs> but that yeah. was in um, what year is that? Year four or four? Something. Yeah, four, gosh, yeah, four yeah. five. Can't go swimming. My yeah. teacher took me out, and yeah, that was a nightmare. But it is what it is. F- um, fourteen, fifteen period start. I remember my mom took me to um the doctors. Doctors referred me to St Mary's. They did um. An internal scan. Right. At that age, having those, an internal scan is basically a camera that's inserted into your vagina. And so you're. I'm 14, 15. 14. At this time. And I'm taking it you're a virgin at the time. Yes. Right. So um, nothing's been inserting in themselves in there. No, not even a Tampax. <laughs> right. Okay. So that was very um, scared. And I remember the doctor saying to my mum, Don't I understand English? Because I was refusing to go up on that bed. I felt very uncomfortable. It was a male doctor. Right. Felt very uncomfortable. Didn't know what was going on. My mum was kind of, I was just listening to what the doctor's saying. I'm yeah. very like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Is your mum like first generation Caribbean? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. she's more she's compliant. Following, to following <laughs> the rules. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm not one of those ones to follow the rules. Yeah. Anyway, we, we did that. They found that I've got cysts on my left and right ovaries. It's polycystic ovaries. My testosterone level is very high. Um, my periods kept coming and going. So I just accepted it. I had to keep going back to the hospital every three to four months. They put me on the pill because my periods, when I did have it, it was so heavy, like right. literally pouring down. Wow. Like I would come out of the house and it's just, pouring down mm. I remember sorry I've got to say this my partner who I'm with now was my first love and he said I traumatised him wait so when did you meet him when I was 17 18 so you've been with him not disclosing your age but a, a good 20 years 26 years on and off okay alright we'll, we'll take the on and leave the off <laughs> well, alright yes so he said I traumatised him because the blood was everywhere and that's wow. how my periods was I remember I'd, I wasn't worried about having children at that age. Mm. It wasn't bothering me. It's only, I think, when my friends started having children in their 20s. And I'm seeing, especially my best friend, Sam, they're having children, everyone around me, the same sort of time, mm. having kids. And yeah. I'm like, oh God, what's going on? Um, I think um, I must have been about 20 eight now so we've passed all this time i'm enjoying my life i thought okay yeah. it's not for me right yeah. now i'm enjoying my life i like going out so yeah. i started going out 
um, for them, like my career because I'm in marketing advertising. Started doing me doing yeah. Mad Max, but that was at the back of my mind. <laughs> my sister had her first child at 19, and that's when it kind of hit me. Like, oh my god, my sister's 19. And we're about three or f- no two years apart. But were you trying for a child? Not at that time. Okay, no. So you didn't know whether you could or couldn't. No. When did you know that you could or couldn't have children? Um, when I was in my early twenties, so about twenty five. So you got pregnant at twenty five? No, I didn't. I was trying. You was trying at twenty five. And then when did you conceive for the first time? When I was twenty eight. So three years, which, which happened. Not, yeah. And I remember my mum saying to me. You're my child. You can have children. Okay. My grand said the same thing. Don't worry about the doctor saying you're my child. You're going to have children. Right. So you conceived at 28. Yep. And how was that? Um, within the four months, um, my first stillborn. Your first stillborn. At four months. 21 weeks. So when you have a stillborn at 21 weeks, mm. how, I don't even know the right terminology. Do you give birth to a uh, stillborn? Yeah, that was the most traumatic experience of my life. So you have to, and it is it a natural birth? Is it a cesarean? How does this work? Okay. What happened was, um, it was June 2005. I remember the date clearly. 2005, right. Yeah. My partner was in the army. So that's who I was with, my son's dad. Mm. Um, I was getting sick. And I was like, what's wrong with me? I kept getting sick, temperatures up. Went to Queen Charlotte's. Mm. Um, they told me that um, I've got an infection. Okay. Now, when you've got an infection, this is something that they could have solved beforehand. Okay. They didn't. So my infection got so bad, my waters broke. 21 weeks. 21 weeks. So you're technically out of the worrisome zone because that's what, 12 weeks? That's 12 weeks. And so I'm assuming you've told people. Yeah. Yeah, you can see my belly. It was, it was summertime, see, like June, it was warm, that it was really hot. You see my belly, it's like, okay, I've come, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a mum. Yeah. I'm literally going to be a mum. So, so everybody that was championing you having yeah, I a baby was, everybody was everyone ready. Everyone was happy for me. My, my nickname is Maxi Mama. Mm. For me, Maxi Mama, that is going to be a mum because I'm everybody else's mum. Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I'm everybody's mum. So this was like a blessing. Right. Um, my gran bought me her first little hat, mm. little hat, because right. And so you knew it was a girl? Not yet. Okay. When okay. did you know it was a girl? Um, we went, when, when, <laughs> when I went into labour. Was it induced labour? It was induced. So how did they, I've never had an induced labour. How okay. did, how did they so induce it? So what they, they, they did, okay. My waters broke. I was getting sicker and sicker. And I remember my partner, Glenn, said to me, Max, we can have more. Because my life was in danger, mm. and they wanted to induce the labour to start up, start off. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, I'm stubborn. Nope. I remember sitting there with the Bible, I mean, God, please get me through this, please, please, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to let her go. A week's gone past now. I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Yeah. And now you're just hoping that she will heal inside. Yeah. Okay. Because babies that are 21 weeks can survive. Yes, they can. Right. So, they had to start me off. They started me off. My partner had to go back to the army because he's only on, he was on, he was on basic training, so he didn't have much time. Mm. Um, my my mum my couldn't handle it, so it was my grand and my auntie. Mm. They came in, they induced me, I had to, the pain, oh my God, the pain. So it was like normal labour pain? It was normal labour pain. My back was killing me. I remember I was walking up and down on the ward with my back to back so when you say the ward it was a delivery suite that's it i was just about to ask you so they you're put me into the labor ward with everybody else that are having babies that are crying because i remember being um in labor for days and i was in a ward that was specifically the labor ward and there yeah. were babies oh, waking me up all i'm i'm in and out of contractions but you know at this point that your baby may or may not survive or did you know for sure that she wouldn't i was hoping that she would survive so in my mind i'm an optimist yeah i'm hoping that i'm gonna she's, she's gonna make it okay so you give birth give birth then they couldn't get my placenta out 
But by the way, my daughter came up with long nails. I come up. <laughs> so she, I knew she was a girl after I gave birth. Came up with long hands, long fingers, eyes bright, and she was beautiful. But she didn't have a heartbeat. She had a heartbeat. She was, she was, she was still beautiful. And at that moment, I, I couldn't, couldn't hold her or anything. You so couldn't she, hold no, her because my placenta they couldn't get it out. So they had to call another doctor to go inside me and rip the placenta out. And I remember my grand sitting there screaming, "Leave my granddaughter alone!" That's enough because I was tired. Mm. It's either that or going into theatre, and I didn't want to go into theatre. Mm. So they managed to do that. They ripped it. They took it out. Oh God, I remember that. And then the realization hit in that she's not here. So you never got to hold her. Had her next to me. Yep. Um, so how how so didn't hold her because it was not like you can hold. Her. Mm. I didn't hold her, but she had her next to me. I had a friend. Um, she was in Cuba, and I never forget this. She came straight off the plane, him and Cheryl, straight off the plane, straight to the hospital, and she came and took pictures and gave every, all the pictures of Angelique. Her name's Angelique, mm. my angel, on a, a, a disc. So I've got all the memories of her, but even though I wasn't able to hold her, I've got Angelique. And how were you able to let go? Gordon. Gordon. Are you... Have you been able to let go? I tell you when I let go, my last pregnancy. So your last pregnancy was the one after Angelique? No, two thousand and eighteen, my last stillborn. Right, so we've got talking to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we've got Angelique. It's a long journey. <laughs> so we've got Angelique born in two thousand and five. And two thousand and five. She was born the day of the bombings, by the way, seven seven oh five. Wow. Okay. After that. I got pregnant on my mum's birthday, 2nd of November, 2005. So soon after? Yeah. My so grand said, two months after? No, to- November. So I felt, I felt pregnant again because I gave birth to Angelique in July, 2005. I felt pregnant in November. Right. Well, I found out I was pregnant, pregnant in November, November, 2005. So now you've just grieved yeah. as best you can. But the, the grieving process... The whole point, another thing as well, that was killing me, I, I wanted to bury her. Okay. When you're, when, I, I, if I'd known what I know now, things would have been different. But Angelique was 21. They don't class her as a, a baby, 21 weeks. They class her as miscarriage. No. And that's what uh. we've been fighting for, to be honest, with months with Tommy's and change the rules. But, but she's a whole... He's person. a baby. She had nails. She had eyes. She had. She's a baby. She's a baby. Yeah, and she's only this said, small, but she's a baby. Twenty-one week children survive. Survive. Yeah. No. But at that time, which was just the other day, it's, it's so different. It was so different. Even, so it's a miscarriage. At what? She's a fetus. Is that what they're trying yeah. to say? She's a fetus. Yep. So when does a fetus in twenty-four weeks? Really? Yeah. That's when they class So you couldn't bury her? No, I had to cremate her. So before all of that now, after I had given birth, they've put me in an isolation room. I'm in this room in Queen Charlotte's Hospital, like I'm in a mental patient. Of course you are. And with bars on the window. Because are they worried that you're going to... No, that's the only room they can put me away from the labour ward. Oh, how insensitive is because that? Because all I can hear was crying, 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 crying. P- people were holding their babies and happiness where I had nothing. So instead of them putting me somewhere that's safe and secure with support, I was mm. put in a way at the bottom of the corridor in a isolation walk with bars in the window. What were you? I know I've gone through some really difficult times and not wanting to be here mm. like that. You know, mm. like you're just like, I'm done. I'm done. Mm. I'm done. Jesus. I'm done. I'm mm. tapping out. Mm. What were you? What was your emotional well-being saying to you? What was your mind and heart get saying to you? Get me out of here. I you, wanted to get out of this. First of all, I rang my mom and my gran. I need to get out. I'm not staying here. Mm. So I got a cab and I went to my mom's in Harrow. I so did, you discharged yourself? Discharged myself. I said, hell no. I'm quite a strong person. Right. And I'm like, no way. So I'm not, I went, let me grieve with my family. And... 
having that family must have been imperative to yeah, your grief. It was important. Had anyone in your family ever had a stillborn before? Yeah, my mom. Wow. And not just a stillborn, she's also had my brother, 1997, who was born with a hole in his heart. I was at the birth, hole in his heart. He was he was Down syndrome, but Northwick Park Hospital. Um, they wanted to operate on him when he was four or five months. My mum and her husband didn't know. Mm. You know, he, that was his first son. He's Nigerian as well, and didn't know what was going on. Um, he didn't make the operate, you know, and then they took his organs without permission. So my mum's gone through that, but my mum never spoke about it. So you didn't know? No, we knew, but she never spoke about her pain. Ah, so at the time of your pain. My mum couldn't help me. Oh. She, she couldn't help me. She would run away. I saw my mum running away all the time. All the time. Because it resonates to what she went through. Mm. And I see it now. I didn't see it then. I used to argue with her. <laughs> you're not, with, not with me. You're not there. You're not, you're not here for me. Not here probably, for me. Probably she be couldn't. She couldn't. She couldn't. I understand that now. But my gran, who, who God rest her soul, she was my support. She, I call her mum She was everything to me She was my strength My auntie Ruby was my strength My auntie's a prayerful woman So she was like We can get through this mm. So I was It's weird Managed to bury her Well not bury her But had a service for her Cremated her I kept her ashes mm. And um, Had a little get together I never cried at the funeral But my son But my partner did He didn't want No one touched her coffin He I was her coffin I never cried Because mm. I think I did All my fighting And crying beforehand I remember Having the girls round And I was dancing And laughing And drinking And I was like No I'm fine mm. That's me covering up That was the start of My mental health That I didn't yeah. know So we're on the second pregnancy Yeah I remember that clearly So November November We just moved in We, we got a place together we Moved in Me and my partner he was getting sent over. He was, he's been sent to Afna, Iraq. Mm. So I said, I'm not going to tell him. I'll wait till he comes back. He comes back because only two months in Iraq. Okay. So I thought by that time I could be mm-hmm. maybe further along. I went bingo with my gran. I remember this clearly quick or bingo, daytime, come back home, somebody burgled our house. After that, I must have got stressed and I had a miscarriage. And how many weeks pregnant? I was six weeks. That was very early. So now you've experienced by yeah. this time in one year. One year, stillborn and a miscarriage. But my, do you know what? I planned, I um, programmed my mind to say, Max, you couldn't have children before. Now I can carry. Wow. So I've turned that, that around. That mindset is, is actually No, I had amazing. to. If it's not, I'm like, I've got a step further. That's me. Right. Got a step over because God is showing me that I can have children, I can carry because that was all I wanted to do was yeah. carry. So, and my grand kept saying, Keep this man, he's got strong sperm. All right, granny. <laughs> all right, gran. <laughs> you know, oh, oh god, oh, thanks, man. Awkward. So, sorry, sorry for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got this strong sperm man, yeah. Same so time we came back from home, you'd go again, go again, right? So, I got pregnant um, twice every year. Didn't go past 10 weeks. Okay, so, all right. So then my question to you then is, were you allowing your body time to heal? Yeah. And I kept going back to the doctors. They can't find out what's wrong with me. But when it comes to miscarriages, until I've had three miscarriages. So you have had stillborn. And then at this point, yeah. we're at the third miscarriage. I'm at the third. They don't class the, that's a stillborn. It's, I've got to have three. So that class it's a late miscarriage. I've okay. got to have three early miscarriages to do what for them to start investigating me so you've got to go through this trauma with no support no help no one offering me anything i can't oh well i can imagine my first pregnancy um didn't make it Mm. Um, and I think for me, I was at that age, I was 30 and I remember being with my partner mm. and it was what we wanted. And I had already found, cause we were getting married two years later, mm. he'd proposed. 
and I already found a cart um, to pull my and I thought it was going to be a boy um, in mm. on in the aisle mm. um, and we were going to decorate this car and we were going to do all these things to this car mm. so I'd already calculated how old the child would be that's exactly what I wanted he you had to pl- it was yeah. just I set it up it you was, plan I planned the whole thing yeah. and then I remember falling pregnant and that was fine and I I, I was on the pill for years mm. or implant or whatever I was on all sorts of things injection and when I came off the pill, they said to me, it's going to take like three months mm. for it to come out your system. But in six weeks, I was pregnant. I was like, oh, all right. Cool. <laughs> but like yourself, I had always had problems with testosterone levels. Yeah. And I was saying to my cameraman, I said, I have hair so always. And so that's one of the things that, you know. Under the chin. I, under the chin. <laughs> I'm, don't even try and zoom in. Lisa's laughing because she knows that I'm sweet. I will I was get like, you. Could you get under the chin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it's something that we've had to go through yeah, and wait yeah. and not being able to lose it and all sorts of yeah. things, you know. And like you, I just wanted to get pregnant. Yeah. So when I did, I was like, this is it. Yeah. Not thinking. My Nothing. parents were quite prudish. They never spoke about miscarriage. I don't know ever if my mum yeah. had. Um, this time my mum had dementia at this time as mm. well. So I never got to share that news with her. My sister is like my mum. She's an older sister. Mm. So, you know, we had that discussion. And then went for the first scan. All good. So I had to tell That's the girls. when you start having and see the baby. Yeah. The, heartbeat, the girl that? group yeah. knew. It was all everything that I yeah. wanted. And then I went for my second scan at must have been 16, 17 weeks. And I remember going into the hospital. I was in North West London and mm. I think I was in. Mm. I'd got pains, basically. And they said, oh, you need to go down to the uh, early pregnancy the unit. unit. Yeah. And so I went down there. I was in Barnet Hospital, actually. Mm. And they did the scan. And the look on the nurse's face. No heartbeat. No heartbeat. I hate that. I put that the other day and that's one of the things that I hate hearing. The look. I can't get it out of my head. This was, you know, now, probably eight years ago, nine years ago. But the look on her face told me everything. Mm. That, and then she wouldn't tell me. Mm. She said, the doctor will see you. Just go back outside. Or they go and get somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah somebody else came to verify just, it. That's it. Scan, yeah. And I was like, no, nah, you just need to tell me what's going on there. Mm. And she wouldn't. Then I was told. And then, you know, we dealt with that. And a really good friend sent me balloons and, you know, just, and I started to do research and mm. I found out, you know, one in every four and, but I couldn't get over the loss. That was my baby. That you was my baby get, that was supposed to be in the car. You never get over it. And even on my wedding day, mm. and I have a daughter since who mm. was at my wedding, mm. but she wasn't the baby that was supposed to be in the car. I couldn't even get the car because that reminded me of the baby that was supposed to be in the car. Um, so it's so weird that even though it's not classed as an a being, a, 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 a fetus. it's my baby. Yeah. That was my baby. And then I got pregnant, quite like you, three months later. Mm. And again, but it was later on now, so I was mm. showing and everything. Mm. And I went for just a routine scan I think this was like my third scan and I saw that look again and I couldn't believe it I knew that look all too well and I I didn't go for it I didn't go for I was routine Hmm. and I just wanted the child out of me and I felt so bad because there was something that was no longer alive in me And they couldn't tell me how long that the child had died. And I wanted the child out yeah. now. Yeah. And you Just, had to wait. And I had to wait. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the head. head. I had to wait. Yeah. And that waiting for me was as bad as when you get the news. Yeah. Because now you're, you've gone home and you've gone to sleep mm. with this child that was once swimming around with you, mm. no longer swimming. Mm. And it's the most eerie. How far gone was you? I was 18 weeks at that time. And I, I couldn't work out what happened. Mm. I, and I was really trying to pinpoint 
what trigger it was. I mean, I was working. Mm. I remember being at work and going into the bathroom mm. and always had a long mirror and I would always look in your and belly. get all gassed. Mm. And then I remember going back to work after mm. and I couldn't look in that mirror. All the little things that you Resonate associate. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, I, I remember we got back in the car after that and I screamed and I think my partner at the time he thought I was mad I've never you know you scream in your, mm, till your voice yeah. breaks and I never forget that I didn't know what else to do I was mm. kicking up the the glove box I was, <laughs> I was wilding out yeah. in the car because I was so angry yeah and, and you start blaming yourself. What have I done? Maybe I should have bed rest. I should have done this. Everything. Yeah, everything starts going around. But I think head. for me, which was even worse, I started blaming God. And, you know, as a Christian, mm. that's a no no. Yeah. Like he yeah. gives and he takes away. Yeah. Like why? Why? And that's yeah. all I kept questioning. Why me? Yeah. Why not me? Yeah. What? Why are you, you punishing me, like, me? All you wanted to do was be a mum. That's all I wanted to be. Because that was just natural to me. Yeah. And that's what I wanted. And that was what was going to happen. Mm. And I did not foresee this journey. Yeah. So I can't imagine going through that one more time. So I did it twice. And after that, I said, I am not trying to get pregnant ever again. I'm done. I wasn't so um, positive no, as you, I, I couldn't. Give I was. Up. I'm done. I c- I can't go through this because it was mentally draining me, and I couldn't give up. And and everyone, I couldn't be around my family or anyone that house kids, and everyone was having kids. So mm. I diverted that into being around people who are on the career path, and I focused on my career. So I was always. I worked in um, publishing, so I was always in Shoreditch, mm. never going home. Glenn was in the army, so he was always away mm. until weekends, and I didn't want to. Mm. think about kids i was like oh maximum out again yeah because mm. that was my escapism yeah if i go home finish work six seven o'clock go home then what so when they've now gone to the third miscarriage yeah what what did the investigation show they didn't even started doing that yet okay and then i then i said no i'm ch- i changed my doctors i changed my doctors back to um no, my doctor in shepherd's bush yeah Shep- shepherd's bush I remember this was my sixth, sixth pregnancy. And I remember I was about 11 weeks and I went something in the middle of the night. I wasn't feeling too good. Glenn was away again. I went to my best friend in Grove, went to the hospital to the couldn't find no heartbeat. I thought, here we go. But you know, I wouldn't listen because I wasn't bleeding and all my other miscarriages, I was bleeding. So I went to every single hospital at the middle of the night asking for scans. I went to Royal Free, Norfolk Park, St Mary's, Queen Charlotte's, all hospitals at three, four o'clock in the morning. Like a crazy one. And I was like, there's no heartbeat, there's no heartbeat. That's that mm. that pregnancy is the one that hit because I'm like, Well, I'm not bleeding. All the others miscarriages was I was bleeding, so mm. I knew there's a problem. I didn't understand till just gone and I had to wait, like yourself, to have a DNC. Mm. And I can't heal when you're waiting for a baby inside of you. You can't. And going for surgery. Oh my God. To remove your child from yeah. your womb. There is. And that can like also that. make you infertile something. Right. <laughs> so you're in a waiting game. So you yeah. go in and they call it, you know, day surgery. Yep. So you're going in the morning, you're queue up with everyone Can't else, eat, starving. Can't, and you're emotionally everywhere. And this yeah. is this is sometimes, I think mine was like five days after. Yeah. Days yeah. after it happened. And I've gone into the ward and I've just kept thinking, everyone knows what's happened to me, you know. I'm a failure. Everybody knows what's mm. happened. They're looking at me. Yeah. And prob- we were in for whatever they're in for. And that, probably know what and I kept looking at the board thinking what did you look write on there mm. what did you write can't keep the child like it, it you all, feel like everything's coming to you in your mind everything. you feel like everyone's having to go or your 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 everyone's like looking like pointing at you like oh my god what's going on with you everyone knows and also if you're or even the nurses you think everyone knows your business everyone knows your business yeah. and you just think to yourself as well at that point when you're in a relationship what does that person think of you how my relationship broke down on the sixth, no, it broke down during the whole time because mm-hmm. I didn't realize how emotionally of a wreck I was. 
I remember clearly because Glenn was always back and forth, back and forth. And I remember clearly one day I was on my way to work and it was pouring with rain. Outside Debenhams in Harrow, I sat on the middle of the floor and I rang my doctors, I need help. I was broken because I need someone needs to help me because mm. I don't want to be here no more. Mm. And I was completely gone. My one of my friends Sadie will tell you, she couldn't get hold of me. She came from Birmingham and we stopped moving back together at work. And she's only been to my house once, didn't see me for weeks, but something's wrong with Maxine. She managed to find me in my house. I didn't want no one to see me down. Because mm. you were this optimist. Oh, uh, Maxine, you mama, were... smiling. No yeah. one seen me crying. That's me. I'm the bubbly. Happy girl, bub, yeah. That's Life the one. Party. Life of the party. I remember my auntie, Ruby. She's not a singer. And she was living in Belgium. She's like, just come over. Come over. Come for some healing. Do not bring your phone mm. <laughs> did not talk to Glenn because we were going through arguments as well and I was getting things arguments from his baby mother in the States to all kinds of stuff he moved back good my child died all that kind of stuff so trauma, I'm like yeah. so not just the trauma stuff with him because oh, he's cheating as well and I thought all of that going through whilst I was I don't and, and the thing is, I don't think I can ever understand man. I don't, a man, woman, whoever. You know, like the insensitiveness of well, you what, you're out here. The story. You're out here doing the most with other people, and I am constantly grieving for our children yeah. because now we're at child number. What number seven? Number seven. Yeah, and you are out disrespecting. And I'm getting the women calling me at work. And I'm carrying your children or trying my very and best. To. Me at and work. why do you think I'm not carrying? Because you're stressing, stressing me out. Stressing me out. Yeah. Stressing me out. So we're going through all of that with Glenn and the cheating, the cheating. Did you the ever cheating. think that it weren't you, it was him? No, he's got he's got two kids. No, no, no. I'm talking about that you were not meant to have children with him. Did you ever think that? No, I didn't. I didn't, I really didn't. I thought, I think because I heard my grand telling me, this man's sperm is strong. <laughs> Stick with him. And it's the only person that's got me pregnant. So, and it was one after another. And he's set Lucian, you know, the accent. And, 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 and it's, he's in the army. And I'm like, oh, okay. I got him from the boat. God. He's going to be a good one. He came, oh. he doesn't know he's not English. Nah. The rule is Nah, 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 nah. So nah, we're nah. at baby number seven and you are broken. I'm broken. So are you now diagnosed with... They said to me, they haven't diagnosed me yet. They said to me, um, if I get pregnant again, then they're going to put me straight into a clinic. What clinic? Professor Bennett's clinic, which is in Hammersmith. She referred me. So that's a clinic for what, miscarriages? That's miscarriages. They do the investigation, find out what's wrong with you. Okay. So that was that. So this was 2008 now. I remember um, Glenn's friend was getting married in St. Lucia. I went, I said, let's go over. I went over, met his mum. When I got back, I got back before him. Got back. Usually I meet him at the airport. Didn't meet him. Something said, I just want to finish this now. Tired. I was tired. Mm. I was like, Max, I'm done. It just hit me. No, regardless of the strong sperm. Regardless, I said, I'm done. It's the mm. mental, it's everything. I'm emotional. I'm done. Mm. So he got home. I think Jason picked him up. He ran me. He's like, where are you? Because I'm in the centre. He goes, oh, you're not home. I goes, no. He goes, come home. So I got home. He's like, I go, Glenn, I can't do this no more. He goes, the witch doctor told me to do <laughs> The witch doctor? Because I had a friend, a male friend, that I talked to a lot. He called him the witch doctor. <laughs> the witch doctor tell you to end it. To end nah. it. I goes, no, Glenn. I goes, I can't take this no more. I'm tired. I want to go back to me. Mm. So this is when I started. We started, we separated. Mm. But he's still coming home weekends. Oh, Lord. So the strong sperm was the still there. Still <laughs> still. God, I can't. I can't. I can't. Anyway, I was doing well. I can't. I was I doing can't. well at work. Um, and they had an office in Atlanta. And now this was now, this was now August 2008. So some of my girls were going to Atlanta anyway. And I thought, do you know what? I'm mm. going to Atlanta because the work said that I have to check out your office. You want to move there. Mm-hmm. I'm doing so well in my job. I thought, yeah. Then Atlanta. Atlanta. So I brought my best friend with me. We was drinking cocktails. Da, 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 da. And you know, Atlanta's seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Hot girl summer. 
Anyway, my, my best friend said, something's wrong with you because I was very snappy. She's like, no. I goes, oh. She goes, I bet you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. She goes, you're pregnant. So I remember we went to Lennox, Lennox Mall in Atlanta. <laughs> I did a pregnancy test. In the mall? In the mall. I'm pregnant. I goes, the test ain't real. It's American. It's not real. It's backwards. <laughs> Didn't I refuse? Not two lines, not, one. <laughs> I refuse. She goes, do it again. Okay, okay. She goes, you can't drink. I goes, damn. All the way it. into Atlanta. Okay. You can't drink. She goes, as soon as we get off the plane, I'm taking you straight to the doctors. Mm-hmm. Got pictures of me and you can see you can, I look tired. So I got off the plane, straight to the doctor. I didn't tell Glenn nothing. Right. Because I'm not doing this again because that's like, it's too much now. Yeah, yeah. And we're not together. And I remember whilst I was in Atlanta, he's like, oh, because we started to build up our friendship. He's like, I miss our friends. I miss you. I'm actually missing you, Max. What good. <laughs> You're brute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, got to the doctors. They, I was five weeks gone. They put me, they referred me straight to, they didn't even waste no time. Okay. Professor Bennett Clinic, they literally said, I've got an incompetent cervix. What's an incompetent cervix? My mum's got that. What basically, does that mean? basically, my cervix is weak. That's why every pregnancy, apart from Angelique, every pregnancy will go at ten before twelve weeks, right? Okay. Unless they don't give me a stitch. And is this a fixable thing? Yeah. Okay. So I was I'm getting on, gas now. I was. I, I was like, no, but I couldn't be happy. I couldn't be. Yeah, because you're scared, right? Scared. I thought, here we go again. I'm not. There was no joy enjoyment with this with my with pregnancy at all. Every week I'm scared to move. And while you're pregnant, are you getting morning sickness and them things? Oh my God, I had bad morning sickness for the whole pregnancy. I for, was, no, wait, for all of the pregnancies? All of the pregnancy. Because, <sighs> um, okay. It right. was horrible. Everything came up. The only thing that didn't come up was ginger beer and ice. And up to today, I still drink ginger <laughs> beer and ice. ice. So I am. Um, I had to have bed rest. They. I had to have injections in my stomach that my mum had to do every day for the first three months to strengthen the lining of my womb. I mm-hmm. had to have pessaries in to, to strengthen it until I was able to have the cervical stitch. And what's a surgical stitch? cervical? A cervical stitch is when they stitch up your cervix. With, they just sew it up. I don't understand. <laughs> but the cervix is. You know, you where the get, baby's gonna come yeah, out. Yeah, so they have to st- sew mine up, so nothing comes out. Nothing comes out. So it's all trapped up in there. Mm, yeah. The only time it can come out if the baby busts it open. Really? Yeah. Okay. So wait, wait. I still wasn't happy about it. I still was. Wait, nervous. wait. You're positive, Max, though. Not this time. I was worried, Max, because this is the eighth pregnancy now. I'm on my eighth. I'm worried. I don't feel comfortable until I get past Angelique's stage, which is twenty weeks. Okay. So when you did the surgical stitch out, I was thirteen weeks, right? Still, and you're in. The, you're not leaving the house. I'm taking it. Oh God, no! I, I was. I literally. I might as well say I've lived in Queen Charlotte's Hospital because I kept going back, and I think that was paranoia. I'm sick. I'm sick. They gave me a room. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. They got a whole ward. They got a whole ward. <laughs> they knew me so well. So I was. I think they were willing you on to have. They this were baby. like, do you know what? They were all willing me on. They were. They were. They were. Brilliant. Um, so didn't so Glenn found out. I didn't tell him. Who told him, Mum? Okay, no, my mum didn't tell him. My sister, <laughs> your mum <laughs> <laughs> She and his best friend are very close. So she told him. Okay. Then he's like, Oh, the baby's not mine. I goes, What are you He's-talking talking about? No, but you in Atlanta, you don't know. You thought you might Because have made- Maxine, you didn't tell me because but you know I didn't tell you because we've gone through this over and over and over and over mm. again. I didn't want you to be disappointed again yeah. even though we're not together like that but I didn't want to it's emotion I'm a person I protect people's emotions mm. let me deal with it no, who's protecting your emotions don't think about that well, don't think about that at all because I can handle it I can, say, I can handle it I can handle it so pregnancy number eight and I remember him telling me this one's coming okay all right but I still don't believe it so we're at what did we 20 weeks we've made 20 weeks are you happy now? I'm happy, but okay. then my uterus flipped. I remember I was literally, what? this was Christmas time. I don't, I can't. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Do you know that, Maxine? I just can't. <laughs> what? So How Christmas did your uterus time. flip? What? Listen, I was in so much pain. And I remember going to Queen Charlotte's. So I do back to Queen Charlotte's again. And they open the door, she's back. Back, yeah, the same room. <laughs> And they did a scan and my uterus was flipped over. That's my child, my son. It's him, Makai, the child. 
flipped over, but they told me bed rest again. I had to have bed rest. So I had to come off work early. So wait, wait. Isn't your uterus where the the egg fuses? Yeah, but it, it can flip. There's a I forgot what it's called. But There's that's a not terminology. Fit the baby. No, it doesn't. Okay, all right. No, no, no it doesn't. <clears throat> right. Um, I remember I was getting bored, so I said to work. There's nothing wrong with my mouth. No. And, and there's nothing just wrong with my computer. Skin, please. So let me just work, please, because I'm bored at home. I'm a worker in it. I'm bored. You're stressing me out right now. So I literally. You should have been watching Jeremy Carl every day. Oh, Judge no. Judy. You need to just. I was in the hospital on my laptop with closing deals in Egypt. <laughs> that's what I was doing to keep myself. Yeah, I get that. I'm not mad. Mm. What am I going to do? Facebook just came up, was popular back then. I was kept messaging on Facebook, like, and I still get those um, statements now from Facebook memory. I'm like, oh my God, that's his cringe. <laughs> cringe. <laughs> what were you saying? Oh, I'm back in the hospital again. <laughs> <laughs> the whole journey of my pregnancy is on Facebook. I see. That's cool, though. No, it's cringe. It's the stuff that I used to say. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay, so now we've made it how far? Now we've made it to, I remember I was in, were, six months now i'm like getting happy yeah because you're big now i'm big now literally my belly's popping you're big and i know what i'm having it was a boy i found out i was four when i was four months and glenn was like it's a boy i told you it's i was coming so it's a boy oh, yeah. my mum and my grand kept calling my stomach dylan as well before they even you know the parents yeah, i know yeah. what you're having yeah. had um the girls done a, a baby shower for me my birthday's in april and I always celebrate my birthday, always do something. So we had a baby shower on April the 4th. I was praying to come out of hospital before then. I did. And then um, I started getting pains again. Oh, man, I can't. And they literally said to take out my stitch. Come back in. There was like, we're keeping you in hospital. Take out my stitch. This was in the beginning of, towards the end of April. Towards the end of April, yeah. Then the bank holiday. And my mum was at bingo. And I was like, mum, I'm having the baby. She goes, no, I'm sick of your false alarms. Mum said, she's not coming. My little sister, she's 16 at the time. She goes, mum, I think Maxine's telling the truth this time. The baby's coming. You're six months. No, this was, I've gone all past oh, that. Oh, you've gone past yeah. that. So the stitches come out and stitches you're all right. Stitches come out, I'm okay. all right. This was, I was 34. Oh, you're good now. I'm good. I'm, I'm but, fine. But are you good? Because I have to acknowledge the women that, you're not good, really. You're not good. And not even that, during that time, I don't care if he sees it, anyway. During that time, I found that Glenn got somebody else pregnant. Glenn was out here doing stuff. Yeah. While we're still trying to carry Because my, yep. Yeah, and he didn't come down to the hospital when I was going through all my stuff, but he was going to take the woman to the hospital to have an abortion. See, all of so that. So that, all of that resonated. It's too in me and I'm like wow so I kept it's arguing not it's no. not safe so you're still emotional because you're yeah. going through stuff yeah you're still I'm hurting hurting you're grieving the loss of seven children and before. I'm so worried you can and I know of stillborns at full time yes 100% I know of them so I kept wanting scans I kept wanting them to do the heartbeat I kept that's just why I kept going back and I think I did that to myself mm. because I'm like every minute I'm sick and I was very sick because I didn't eat anything because everything kept coming up mm. so they put me on I had, I had those transfusion at one stage as well I never was so low um, they kept giving me tablets to make me stop s getting sick it didn't work my Kai was <laughs> he was ready to come because they said when you get sick for your pregnancies that baby's meant to be healthy so he came Oh, God. What was it like holding your child, your first full term living child? Let me tell you the whole. Let me tell you the whole birth story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we don't want to do, we don't want to put off everybody. No, 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 no. I'll never. But it's so funny because everyone was tired of me being in the hospital, isn't it? And I'm 38 weeks now, so they think, okay, it's not coming back and forth. My mum was in bingo. My grand just won 16 grand at bingo. All right, great. So I was like, okay, my guys, um, baby's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Glenn, he said that he'll be at the birth. My guy's meant to be due on the 15th of May. So he said he will be at the birth. My sister was an Isle of Dogs. Now she said to me, do not have that baby until I get there. Okay. Because this is her sister's first baby. Yeah. That we've and I was there for. with at hers. Right. Yeah. And I'm close with Paris because Paris and my daughter would have been the same age. Right. So yes. I was like, oh, Angelique was alive, you're too busy doing this. Yes. And, and I still say that now. Oh. So I was 
contracting back to back and no one was listening to me but having contractions but there's one black nurse she's like no something's up she did the scan she goes you're going straight you have your you're, you're dilated we can take you up to labor because no one else no one else was listening to labor my mum came my brother came my dad came everybody knows everybody's everybody's sitting there and i'm like between the lot of you lot you know all had children no one can rub my back oh because they're just i think everybody's scared now right yeah they're all stay no all on knows. no one knows then my sister know. came she's like right i'm here ready now. and she's ready and then the doctor must have, i must have been on gas and air epidural every pain can i remember i don't smoke yeah. and i remember i said to the um the doctor he's a bayesian doctor i need a spliff <laughs> You better take that pain, girl. You've been waiting a long time. Then he said to me, we need to cut you down there so tight. I'm like, what? I started laughing. My mum goes, I'm so sorry about my door. He cut you open. So literally they had to, must know. So they said they're going to bring me into surgery. He wants to go. My sister was all scrubbed up before anyone else can say me. So my sister went with me. Literally they had to cut with forceps. My son was breech. So they had to cut me with four sets. And I remember Pam saying to me, your career's over. This is what right. she said to no me. more hot girl no summers for you, sis. And then she goes, oh, he's here. Because I couldn't move now. Oh my God, he looks like Glenn. This oh. Is like, oh my God, he's born with an extra finger. Oh yeah, mine had a, mine actually had a, two extra fingers. One on each hand. And then a hole in These the air or something. It was a miracle baby. When I saw him, I my heart. That was my mush mush. Yeah. That was my blessing. I said, thank you, God. Oh, no. Actually, all I wanted to do was hear the cry because I took him away. Yeah. And I was waiting. And then the crying. And Pam, mm-hmm. held, Pam held him first. My sister held him first, brought him to me. And I was like, this is my baby. And I remember staying in the hospital all night. And I, I, I was looking at him. I couldn't stop looking at him. Did Do you ever feel that that birth made up for the ones you lost? Yeah. Because I said, if I didn't lose... I think I feel what I've gone through I wouldn't have Makai and Makai saved my life yeah because Makai came when you needed him most right 100% when your mental health was was dire straits he saved my life wow that's why I spoiled him him. and is he your only child did you try again after and we weren't successful and that's the poem I was me and Glenn finished ended up going back to my first love. Mm. <laughs> it's in the hospital. I remember him running in the hospital saying, Max, and I lost the baby. So I didn't. But I thought, you know what? Things happened. I was okay with that. Mm. Because I had Makai was been about one or two. Because um, I had Makai. But Makai was sick. Makai mm. had breathing problems. So mm. I kept going back and forth to the hospital because he was like, they said that his lungs, all of his lungs was weak. But they couldn't diagnose that he had asthma. And I remember... I went back to work so early, I regret that. I went back to work when he was five months. So but I regret no, that. when the head is just totally still, still not yeah. too, too strong. Because you know, I'm in my 30s now, and you know, in your 30s, and I'm like, I'm, not, I'm used to being by myself. I'm not, yeah. and I thought I would do things like leave him in the shop or something like yeah. that, scatty like that. I thought I wouldn't be a great mum. But I have, I've got a, uh, great support system from my mum even though she does get on my nerves <laughs> my mum my best friend Sam my, um, and um, my cousin Sarita they, they're holy godmothers and but, Natalie but you're you are now and I want to talk about this before mm. we end today mm. you've gone through the most remarkable journey mm. and you sit here today and I'm sure there are women that are in awe of your spirit your humour your ability to push through yeah. Never such give up. a difficult time but you started angels and miracles yeah. so tell me a little bit about that angels and miracles is um uh, angels which is morgan and angelique and all my, my miscarriages but mo- more so for morgan and angelique and my miracles makai now it's a brand where you don't give up mm. I, I my thing is i don't don't give up even now so you support other mothers that oh are my trying? gosh yeah i speak to people i've got people who will go from miscarriages after miscarriages and i'm their heir just what to do because no one really knows about early pregnancy you know that you can actually refer yourself right there's certain things that you can do to help yourself because we are meant, not meant to speak about especially in our black community 
we are meant to shut up yeah we are because i noticed that you know when i miscarried it wasn't something that we spoke about no and it's only recently and i mean this is going to be aired in the the month that we recognize those that those children that didn't make yeah. it but are watching over us um but it's important that we speak about it it's so important it's in our community in our community yeah. we have so many women that are trying to be mothers yeah. via um, conceiving and carrying IVF, full time. There's so much that can can be done. There's so much that we don't know. Like my last pregnancy, I had preeclampsia. I never mm. knew what I had. I never heard of it before. Mm. I didn't know that can kill me. And I think that last pregnancy made me hit rock bottom. And so, if there is someone there that is trying and not conceiving, because fortunately, don't listen and wait. Just do what you can. Press to the doctors fight find out what's going on go and get fertility checks even if you're not trying if you go for a fertility check early on they can find out if you're conceiving of any issues if i'd known what i know now i would have had 10 kids mm. i would have been that mama with the house <laughs> and the play with the big kids i would have had 10 kids and that was me because i love children absolutely love children and so your message for any woman out there who has miscarried and successful or not what would it be don't give up don't keep it in. Talk about it. Heal. 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 Because we don't talk. And because we don't talk, we internalise it. Mm. And when you internalise things, it makes you sicker. And that is not good for producing the baby anyway. Yeah. The body needs to heal. 100%. But find out what's wrong. I know people who like, oh, I'm not giving up. And I'm like, don't give up. You're only 30 in your 30s. Why are you giving up? Just because one person says you can't have. I am I keep saying, look at my story because I am, they told me I couldn't have children. To start? To start off with. And, and then I went on to have eight. If they were alive, I would have had nine, ten children. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I've had ten. Yeah. I've had ten pregnancies. Bloody hell, I've had ten pregnancies. Ten pregnancies. And if they'd done their investigations properly, they would have known that I had the same thing as my mum. And then but what service. about those women that reach the forties and the fifties and have to give up? I still want one more. Jeez, <laughs> no, I do. You are not playing. No, I'm not. I'm not. I still want one more. I've got issues at the moment, but you're here for it. But I'm here for it. I've been told that they found the polyps in my uterus. My fibroids have fallen back, and they've got a cyst on it. I broke down on the fifteenth of September. Broke. I mean, my partner's outside. I'm at Queen. I'm back at Queen Charlotte's, and I said, "I'm back here in this place." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "I need another hospital." <laughs> and I hope you do. And, and I'm not. I'm going to the universe. I'm going to. You're going to. I'm 45 next year. I don't care. You're I'm going. To. I'm going to. I love this. I'm going to get everything removed if they have to remove it. I love remove this. It and I'm this going. is so inspiring. I have to say, and I do hope that if there is anyone out there, they mm. can. We're going to put the details. Yeah, okay, show you my baby clothes as well. So I've done baby clothes. Baby clothes. Yeah, let me see. for prem babies, people, rainbow babies. Oh, let me see. This, this, this is my thing. It's, oh, it's my brand. Beautiful. So, um, okay. rainbow. It's rainbow because you know what? It's the fight for a baby. Well, I'm not. I'm not looking for a baby currently. I'm looking for a man to procreate with to have a baby. So, um, if anybody wants to procreate with me, and we can get some love. And if anyone wants to talk as well, I'm yeah. here to talk. I'm here to listen. This you know? is this is everything. This is everything, and I will push as much as I can. Yeah. To it's make, a slow progress, to make but the voice I know heard. when I'm ready. It, it's meant to be and this is i'm a fighter you are blessed pain into purpose that's you my thing blessed. pain into purpose maxine it's been a pleasure having you thank you so that's okay much. and i'm thank you for having me so lovely <laughs> oh thank, thank you, you.